28 days until Election Day. And Michael Steele was, is with me tonight. The breakdown starts now. Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. That is not the Rick Wilson. That is the Michael Steele. The Rick Wilson is out traveling, doing Lincoln Project business. So, of course, I had to bring in Michael Steele, friend of the show, one of my favorite people in the whole world to come hang out with us and talk a little bit about what's going on, given we're 28 days from the midterms. Michael, it's always fun to have you, my friend. It is so good to be with you, Tara, <laughs> as always. I'm doing my best Rick Wilson impression, but, you know. <laughs> We're, right, we're right. working on it. We're That's right. On it. You actually have more hair than Rick Wilson does. <laughs> <I know. laughs> just, just a I little know. bit. Just a little bit. And I don't know for how much longer, but <laughs> that's such a sad thing to say. But yes, it's true. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, um, I'm happy you're you're hanging out with me tonight and, yeah. and our audience because there's lots to talk about. We just had a, a long weekend, and you know the the fire hose of fuckery never slows down. Right. And, um, you know, I, you and I were actually in Philadelphia together on Friday for the unconvention, which was a Michael Smirconish bipartisan policy Institute, United yeah. America joint effort at the national constitution center, where we were talking about the stakes, uh, facing our democracy, how we fix it and where people like myself who are politically homeless now, where we go, you're still, Hanging on I'm to, still to the GOP. Even though I'm inside the house, so it does, yeah, it <laughs> you're still matter. trying. You're still it's trying, but um, it was uh, we we were on different panels though. I was in the afternoon, you were in the morning. You got out of dodge, yes. but uh, it was it was great to be a part of that event. I think it's important for people to feel as though their voices are being heard, and to, for like smart people to get together with fellow Americans to talk about how do we solve these problems because this election cycle, as you know, Michael, there are a lot of crazies on the ballot. There and, are. Woo. There are. You're absolutely right. The The Unconvention is a collaboration uh, between the Bipartisan Policy Center and Michael Merkanish. I serve on the board of the of the Policy Center. Um, and so we were very excited when we were approached to, to do this and sort of break, break in this concept of getting people uh, thinking about and energized around the idea of democracy and the importance of it. Um, and the role that they play as citizens, obviously. Yes. And, and to your very important point, a recognition that, you know, these people who are on these ballots are an extension of us. So if you think yourself to be a, uh, you know, an a-hole denier of what <laughs> happened in 2020 and want to turn back the clock on uh, human rights and uh, voting rights and things like that, then, OK, this is this is your crew. But we suspect most Americans aren't. Right. Um, and so creating a platform where they can feel uh, a sense of collaboration and a sense to your point about being homeless, recognizing, yeah, I may not have a quote home, but I got peeps. Right. right? I, I got right. people around me who are in this fight for the for the mm -hmm. right reasons, all trying to pull in the right direction. So it was a great, a great um, turnout. In fact, we had planned, uh, Tara, uh, when the, when we first put up the idea, I'll, I'll probably get about 200 people show up. Well, it sold out within yeah. the first hour. There was like um, 600 people there. With 600 people there and another 2,500 or so online. Uh, so yeah, it was, was amazing. Streaming. It was so amazing. It, it turned out to be a, a fairly successful event, which we're looking to repeat around the country. Oh, I think that would be fantastic. And if you have never been to the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, oh God, it is well worth the yeah. trip. It is yeah. beautiful. And I, you know, I got a little misty eyed in in the room with the founders. You know, I love the, that. I, right. And they're like real life statues. And I have George no idea. Washington was a big boy. Right. And James Madison was little teeny tiny. Little, little teeny I guy. I was like, wow, he was short. But, you know, big in spirit and ideas. And um, the quote in that room from George Washington says the power of the constitution rests with the people. That's that it. is something that I used at the conference. And I want to remind everyone listening that that is absolutely the case. It, we still have the power to vote. That is the most powerful tool in this entire operation because you get the government you deserve. So, you know, folks, I always say there's more of us than there are of them. And, um, it doesn't matter unless you go out there and vote and take a couple people with you. So on that sure. note, public service announcement, there you go. let's get back right into 
like I said, there's always fuckery going on. And fuckery. last week in the Republican Party always sums it up. It's Tuesday. Roll it. Said, talking about Nancy Pelosi, I said, we're going to kick that bitch out of Congress. I want to replace the American people with millions of desperate people that can't even speak English in the United States. We saved the most important cultural story of the day for last with you. Beloved cartoon Scooby-Doo is revamping. A character is officially coming out as gay. So I don't care if Herschel Walker paid to abort endangered baby eagles. I want control of the Senate. Do you know the biggest crowd I've ever seen? January 6th. I'm amazed of his genius. Well, it starts with marijuana, but where does it go from there? Uh, I say the N-word. Well, it means the nuclear word. I'm not the only boy that can straighten it out, I'll tell you that. If you're meek or weak or you're a bitch, you need to hit the bricks because it's finished. That movement is dead. But right now, there are two parties in this country. The party of Trump and the other party is called We Hate God. We gotta come back in 24 with the vengeance. Not care what the media says, not care what your friends and family say, not care what anybody says. It's gotta be Trump 2024, make America great again, or else. Two words for you. Two words for you. Joe Biden is a freaking idiot. Frankly, Kanye sounds much more sane than virtually everybody else in public life. Cheers. Everyone, sexual chocolate and Randy Watson. What the fuck was that? Okay, so we came into this talking about being homeless. Thank God, Uh, (laughs) because if that's what's inside the house, oh Lord bless us. I'm saying, Michael, I keep telling you to come on over here and get away from those loons. This is this is. I, uh, my God, uh, where do I start? There's a couple things. First of all, the James Brown, Randy Watson impersonator. I don't know what that was. That is embarrassing. But, you know, the, the idea of Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about kidding, kicking any bitches out of Congress makes my skin crawl. Yeah. The, you know, she's the bitch that we need to be kicking out of Congress well, along it, with her other it, one, uh, Lauren Boebert. But, yeah. you, you know, they, they, this this tone that they have that they're this of entitlement and superiority and hypocrisy on top of it all the family values party is just insane and the racism michael i know you saw this because marjorie taylor green was on a roll the last couple of days yes. i want to run this between her and tommy tuberville the, the comments that the racist comments they made over the weekend and then we'll get into it Some people say, well, they're soft on crime. No, they're not soft on crime. They're pro-crime. They want crime. They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. Joe Biden's five million illegal aliens are on the verge of replacing you replacing your jobs and replacing your kids in school and coming from all over the world they're also replacing your culture go <laughs> well um there's so much there to 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 get into in terms of Tuberville and um, Marjorie. Um, Marjorie, three names, as Stu called her. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, three toes or whatever. Um, 
it, it's, you know, I, it, it's at the point for me, to be honest, uh, Tara, I don't really give a shit about them. Um, what I care about is what what the American people, you started our conversation tonight quoting George Washington. And I think people need to understand what the power of those of those words mean for them, that all of this rests with us. So you can go to a circus and enjoy the clowns, but you know that's where they belong. They don't belong in the U.S. House of Representatives. They don't belong in the governor's mansion in Arizona or Pennsylvania. They don't belong in the state legislature. You know where these assholes belong. Mm -hmm. You know what these assholes are about. And yet, you know, asking me uh, to, you know, say something about Tuberville, well, he's a racist prick. Asking me to say something about Marjorie Taylor Greene, same thing. But at the end of the day, I don't live in their states. I don't get to vote them out. But Michael, but, so, the so people, the, but the people who do live in their states who are running on a similar platform of using crime as their their platform, it's effective. Who are using this replacement idea concerning uh, immigration in this country? The it's effective. Stupid, shouldn't they the be? But shouldn't they? They're all part of the same party. Shouldn't they be asked and held accountable if they agree with those folks? Because how, no one is condemning them. You can, yeah. I mean, condemning them. But if condemning them gets a voter to go, oh shit, I didn't know that. Okay, that's one thing. But if condemning them gets the voters to go, what the fuck? I don't. I agree with them. What are you going to do? So this is this is the space we find ourselves in right now. And as we look at these national debates, this isn't a national discussion. This is a state by state discussion. This is a, a, a county by county discussion uh, within our own backyards. And my concern is that more and more Americans align themselves with that thinking than not. And I think the rest right. of us are kind of whistling past the graveyard, hoping that's not true. But I suspect it is true. And I think we'll find that out when these individuals give power back to a Republican Party that is that has identified itself and raised the level of its discourse around its racism, pushing out uh, people like uh, Tuberville and Green uh, and 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 and. And sanctioning and giving credence to actions that would undermine our democracy. That tells me people see that as an extension of what they believe and what they want. Because if they didn't, then they wouldn't. So you can sit back and say, well, gerrymandered districts gives us Marjorie Taylor Greene and Tuberville and all these individuals. Okay. But at the end of the day, I don't care how you draw a line, the people inside that line think and believe certain things, don't they? Yes, but if so that you, but at the party, do? but here's what I but here's my concern is that the party used to take the approach you're taking where it was, well, those are isolated incidents. We, we you know incidents we don't con we don't accept but that. That's, that's not who the party is. Right. That's gone now. The party accepts this as mainstream, which is my point. It's not just isolated right. to Alabama and Georgia and a, a handful of the extremists. These are the people who are running the party. They are the ones that are winning the uh, the you know the uh, primary elections that Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy are now like. Well, we're going to support them because they're Republicans, as opposed to saying what George Bush, H. W. Bush did, and others in the past were like, "Nah, we're not okay with these people because it's all about political power." That's my point. Where no, it's I, much I, bigger. I agree with your point, and I think your point we is we should reject it. I agree with that too. But the question is, how many times have we had discussions uh, together? Uh, and how many times have we had discussions with others um, where the frustration uh, comes around? How do I convince somebody that that um, Joe Biden was not illegitimately elected when they're looking, when you're sitting there and they're talking to them? I just literally had this conversation yesterday with a friend of mine, and I just kind of said, you know what, we're just going to stop talking politics right now because 
in the next 30 seconds, I'm not going to like you so much. Right. Um, and you're not going to like how I not like you so much. Mm -hmm. And that it will end all of that. So we just, because no matter, I mean, it was, a, well, you know, I just think that, you know, I, you know, I like Trump's policies. I'm like, okay, what policy and specifically did you like? And then it goes, goes into this whole thing about, and, and, and the thing about it, Tara, is they don't agree with you. Oh, yeah, you know, I think some of the stuff that the party is saying and stuff that some yep. of these people are pushing out is wrong. Yeah, but. But they, they but I don't want to, I don't support socialism. Well, who does? Right, right, <laughs> who right. The hell do, who is out here saying, I want to take everything you own and give it to someone else? No right, one's other than Bernie, that. Other than Bernie Sanders, other than no Bernie one, Sanders. right? And the, mean, country, it's, it's, and the country passed judgment on his, on his campaign. Correct. He didn't get the nomination, He, you know, and he's done. But you so know what I say to those people? That's what we're up against. This is what I say to those people. I say, you don't need Donald Trump for those traditional Republican policies. You don't need Tuberville and Walk Herschel Walker and Mastriano and Marjorie Taylor Greene well, and Paul anyway. You don't need any of those people in order to get what you can with you, the people we're talking right. to, what you consider traditional Republican policies that you like, tax cuts and whatever else. You don't need the crazies. But when you accept the crazies to get those tax cuts, you're doing it by any means necessary, and it's undermining our constitution and our democracy as a result. And so you're, not, are get, part and of the you're not getting those tax cuts anyway because Correct. you didn't get them when the, the last time we paid two trillion dollars for tax cuts. You Especially didn't see if you live them. In a blue state. You <laughs> sit up there with one tooth in your head. You didn't get. You didn't get the dental plan. Right. I'm sorry. Right. It didn't happen. Right. So That's what right. the hell are you? applauding for it's I rationalization mean, just, because they don't want to face the facts and it's it's negative partisanship well it's better than those guys and that is so difficult to overcome that's what we face every day that's why we have to force them to take a look in the mirror of what you're supporting to get the tax cut this is what you're supporting you're all right with that i you know i i don't know it's 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 the same thing with the herschel walker situation i was on comedy central last week and it's it's on now it's on that show hell of a week with uh charlamagne the god yeah uh, which was i got different... canceled by the way but that's okay no I, did you I, really I, yeah i was supposed to but they canceled the oh my god i got it i understand i i'm not terrible but no stop. i am not i'm not i'm not, I'm not <laughs> no 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 listen her, right? i feel yeah. like not i her. was a little out of out of you know my normal demographic there but it was fun nonetheless yeah. um but we talked about Herschel Walker and I'm just, you know, I have zero patience for this guy, like none, no grace whatsoever for him. And it came out just today, the Emerson poll, that he's within two points of Warnock, despite all of this nonsense and People all of the stuff that he has care. said, they don't care. They don't. Like, Herschel I Walker just, could be a senator. I, 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 yeah, probably will be. And then everybody's gonna be bitching about Herschel Walker going to the cinema and going, uh, what how the hell did that happen? Well, it's because you didn't turn out your vote. I mean, or or you voted for him and that's what you wanted. Look, I, I said on Morning Joe last Friday, and I'll repeat it here again, that the people of Georgia don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. If he's within two points of of, of the pastor of the seminal black church in the state of Georgia, Martin Luther King's pulpit, this guy who's, who, you know, has served admirably, quite honestly, in the Senate, um, not been an embarrassment to anybody. He's no. put forward some sound policies here and there. Competent. Competent. And you want to take the guy who, who <sighs> won't even own up to the fact how many kids he's got, Paying for abortions, all you evangelical Christian right people that's so offended by the idea. Right. right. Now you say, oh, we don't care. I mean, Dana Loesch, the she only thing it. I want is the Senate. Well, okay. I don't know that's where that is in the Bible. Want. I don't so know where don't... that is in the Bible, by the way, all right. the Christian nationalists out there and all these people running around, you know, where is it say, we say that you're supposed to compromise your integrity and your, the principles of Christianity for power? Well, that's the, what the whole it, Christian movement. Well, done. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that sermon on the mount that Jesus gave. You know, these <laughs> bastards would do a rewrite. So we we understand what that's about. That's because right. that's exactly what they would do. Because the sting of the requirement to do the right thing the right way is something they want to avoid. So to the people of Georgia, do you give a shit? Mm -hmm. I don't think you do. 
I don't think you do. I don't think you really care whose abortion he paid for. I don't think you care uh, how many children he's had by how many different women. Only thing you care about is that, hey, we got the seat, we got the power. So, okay, but live with the consequences of that yep. and understand what it means. And, you know, the rest of us, we're going to have to, we're going to have to figure out elsewhere how we navigate around this because the reality of it is when people subjugate their their values to power and they and they indicate that they really don't have the kinds of concerns that the rest of us have about our country and of whether or not these values still matter what this is what you're going to get two points. And so we shouldn't be surprised at the end of the day, after everything we now know, and the more that we're still, we just found out we're now seeing emails, text messages between these two women who had relationships with him, where he came back a second time after she got pregnant yes. and said, well, you need to have an abortion. Yeah. And they don't care. They don't care. But they don't we're not, care. so we're not talking to the Republicans necessarily that are so entrenched, the MAGA Republicans. We're talking to the Republicans who voted for Joe Biden and the independents there in Georgia who can make a difference here. And Democrats need to do what they do and get their voters out. Plus a couple percent, just peel off a couple percentage of those Republicans and you deny Herschel Walker and deny the rest of us to having to suffer through six years of Senator Herschel fucking Walker. So how how does, Herschel, how does Herschel Walker solve the the what's his plan for uh for climate change? Oh, just wait till the good air replaces the bad air. What's his plan for what's his plan for uh, high interest rates? Ah, just don't spend money. What what? Come on, people! You can't take your head out of your damn ass for God's sake and look at what's in front of you and recognize that of all the people on the planet, or certainly within the state of Georgia, who should be running for the United States Senate, that brother ain't the one. Exactly. And Democrats, they should be running those ads. We're doing exactly what you just said. What is Herschel Walker's plan for this, 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 and this? What they think voters care about? And listen to the asinine, uneducated, unqualified answers that he gives. And it's it, it, and that should, that if that's what people care about, then is this the guy you want? I just don't understand why there aren't more hard hitting um, framing of this because you see the way Republicans fight. This is, it, it, I just saw a story about out in Arizona, Peter Thiel. Who oh, so is, you're about to go to Arizona. I'm yes. glad you did. Yes, we're going to Arizona now <laughs> because Peter Thiel's out here um, funding Blake Masters. He's one of his protégés. I think Blake right. Masters was his chief of staff. Um, and because he's done with JD Vance now, we're going to get to that in a second too. But He's out here funding these fake conservative publications. And I saw this because what the, I saw this and I thought to myself, this is exactly what the Russians did. Their propaganda uh, intelligence operations from 2016 on to draw people in. They would put like legitimate news stories or innocuous stories about the weather or sp local sports or something to get people to click on those publications. And then it would be a whole bevy of propaganda, lies, right. uh, conspiracy theories, whatever, mixed in. And that's how I would draw the you know less informed folks to go, oh, well, I didn't know that. This is exactly the playbook that now Peter Thiel and Republicans are using in places all over the country where local newspapers have dried up so you don't have, they don't have the same local newspapers, right. the trusted, you know, local papers. They're dried up and they're filling that void with these propaganda BS PAC paid for um, uh, newspapers. And I'm thinking to myself, this is what political asymmetrical warfare looks like. And I don't think the Democrats are prepared for it. This is what Republicans are doing. They're coming from all sides. Well, and Repu the Democrats are still out here arguing over, you know. How many dots in a Medicare proposal? Well, they're not only not prepared for an asymmetrical war, um, they don't they don't even know what kind of war they're in. <laughs> I know. We have a series called The Game You're In that right. Trigby and Maya host on Mondays. Uh, they're doing they town halls now, but that you have to play the game you're in. You, you, they don't get that. So that, that brings me to... Um, Arizona. Arizona and Carrie Lake and... Mm. and Miss Hobbs, what the hell are you doing, Hobbs? What the? I'm not debate. I don't want to debate because you know I just I just don't want to give a platform to this stupid. 
mistake. Well, get your behind in front of a camera and put Carrie Lake next to you and shut her down. This is not hard. The woman is is crazy as hell. She's a fake. She's a mm-hmm. fraud. She's a phony. Call her out. This woman supported Barack Obama for God's sake. Tell her. All right. She she supported. She was all up in the anti-Trump, uh, never Trumpism in 2016. She's a a, a, a a an opportunist to put it politely. Yes. Right. Call yes. her out. She's perpetuating a lie. She's perpetuating deconstruction of our country, our values, our yep. the, the our democracy. Call her out every time. Get on a debate stage, and every time this woman opens her mouth, turn to her and look at her and say, "And that's why you're unqualified to yes. be governor." And yes. Next point. Exactly. Everything. And that's why you're unqualified to be governor. She is unqualified. Yes, she looks good. She sounds pretty and she's quick with it, but she's dangerous as hell to the people of Arizona. Another group of folks who, again, I don't understand what you see that I don't see. But what I do see is danger. Will Robinson. Yes. <laughs> danger Will Robinson. Yes. <laughs> And she's sitting here and and acting like, well, I don't, you know, I'm just not going to debate her. Yeah, like I, that's going to do what? What right. do you what do you think happens when you don't debate the woman standing next to you, who is like spewing all of this anti democracy stuff that you don't you don't have a plan in your brain to push back on that? Come on, and stop. you don't give voters a side by side real right. life contrast. What right. are they? Thinking again, this goes back to old school tactics that you know, oh, I'm not going to debate my opponent to elevate them. That's when you're up by 35 points. Thank you. Not when you are in a double, you know, in a single digit race with someone who is getting way more earned media than you are, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people know who Carrie Lake is. Oh, the, can you see the fakery with the damn vacuum cleaner? I mean, yes. Seriously? I mean, it's just, and so this is one of those situations where I, I call her a Trump fembot because she is taking pages out of the Trump playbook where all publicity is good publicity, doesn't matter if it's good or bad, because that still gives her a platform. So I don't know what they're doing. Meanwhile, you have Republicans now that are coming out and the same Republicans in Arizona supporting Katie Hobbs. Well, that's wonderful. Convince her ass to get on the debate stage. Please. You got three, you got two weeks. Do it in the next 10 days. Just you, a debate. I mean, because you know what Carrie's going to say. Of course you it's all there. Gonna, what, what is she going to say on, on it, pick a topic, pick a topic. I, I, I just don't. End with the election was a lie. If I'm governor, I'm going to overturn the 2020 elections. I'm going to, you know, we're going to make sure Trump wins in 2024. And just, you're unqualified. You're just unqualified. Arizonans, she's unqualified. Yes, right? that's she, it. She, she is a, a, a two-bit TV host. She's unqualified. Yes. This is her first run for public office. She's unqualified. That's right. She has no clue. She is a sycophant for, for Trumpism. Do you want that in this state? We've already proven the lie here in, in Arizona. Yep. yep. Three, four times over. You want this on this? You want this in the governor's mansion? I mean, it's not hard. It's I don't, not. I don't, I, I, I don't get with Democrats. I don't know what they do. I, know. I don't know how they don't do politics. I don't get it. <laughs> That's I why we beat know. their asses all those it. years in so many races, and we're like, listen, we are trying to make you know make amends for all those years. Listen to us, <laughs> please. I don't. I don't get I it. I, I, I just know. Never see such a politically inept and incompetent group of people. Uh, afraid, well, afraid to engage politically. Slap the shit out of somebody for once, would you? Politically, politically. not literally, right? Politically, <laughs> this isn't a Trump rally. <laughs> this isn't a Trump rally. Okay, just make them pay for their words. Make them pay for their words. They hand it to them on a silver platter all the time, and Democrats it's go like this. So and they and they fumble the ball all the time. That which you is talked why about, you talked about the founders in the in the at the unconvention in the room at the yes. uh, the national Const- was national constitution, constitution hall center. Yeah, center. 
Could you imagine? Could you imagine this group of Democrats in that room? They'd be <laughs> shrinking in the corner like, I don't know. It's just too many people in here. I don't, I don't I think know. we can say anything. I, I know. Well, I, I and I say anyway. that this is, this is exactly why the Lincoln Project exists and needs to continue to exist because somebody has to be the tip of the spear. And we're, you know, we're doing our best to do that. And that's why we are um, at the front and center of all of this because somebody's got to do it. Um, speaking of also one, yes, <laughs> yes, he one, is. <laughs> one another uh, race in Arizona, which is, concerns me greatly and should concern everyone because it has incredible consequences besides the governor, is the Secretary of State's race. Yes, you know these are the races, and we've been saying this and emphasizing this on this on this show and throughout Lincoln Project. We have been telling people, please pay attention to the Secretary of State race in your state because they are the overseers of your elections. And you have all these election deniers running and they could potentially win. And the side so Mark Mincham, Let's be clear. Yeah, Some I know. Like this guy in Arizona could win. Yeah. He's up in the polls, Mark Mincham, right? So if he's up in the polls, that means that tells me that Carrie Lake is actually winning this thing, that Katie Hobbs is not. Because I don't see people ticket splitting where no, they're voting they for they her, but not him. Split up. <laughs> right. I mean, ticket splitting happens, but not in a situation like this. Yeah, it, it, it tickets, the same they'll, they'll vote for the federal office for the Democrats and give the Republican governorship to the, to the to the Republicans or vice versa. But right. they don't not in they this don't take a lesser office and then split their vote up. That, no. That's not how that works. And especially since they're talking, they're they're speaking the same ilk. Okay, they're election deniers. They're yeah. they're conspiracy theorists. So they're aligned. So this is this should scare the shit out of everybody because it's not only Arizona, but also in Nevada. Yeah. The crazy out there, Secretary of State, same thing. Election denier. You know, these people are they want to destroy our democracy. They have no respect for it. And so none of those tax cuts or whatever you think that Trump did well will freaking matter anymore when elections are gone away. And we don't have free and fair elections anymore. I don't know what it's going to take for people to understand this. I'll, I'll throw another race in there that folks need to stop whistling past, and that is the the U.S. Senate race in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yes. I think yes. I think uh, Mehmet Oz is stronger than than uh, the national press wants to say, or or at least cover. Um, I just spent some time in Pennsylvania and I talked to a lot yes. of Pennsylvanians and. <laughs> I think that I think I think Fetterman's got a problem. I think people are concerned about his health. Obviously, mm -hmm. I think he's taken he's taken uh, two or three shots on the chin on crime, um, has not recovered from that or is not recovering from that as, as well as some may think. Um, so and again, that could be an instance where they give the governorship to the Democrats. Again, take a splitting down, yes, which happens you know, in Pennsylvania. They're famous for that. Right. And 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 so they they give the the Republicans the, the Senate and they the down ballot uh, race, the governorship they give to the Democrats. They take it split down and and that'll and they'll go, OK, we're done. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about that is it's just again, it's one of those situations where people think, oh, you know, uh, Fetterman destroyed Oz over the summer. And he was. Yeah. Twitter trolling is not winning a race. And I, right. even though I appreciated the entertainment over the summer and it kept people engaged when normally they aren't, but when people are really fully engaged is now. And Oz held his fire and is now the, the you know, unleashing the barrage, which is starting. And you see now, you see it going like this. Yep. And Fetterman doesn't have an answer, a sufficient one yet. I mean, they, they need to get it together. They really they, do. They do. And, and, but do you, you know, not to blow past the, the importance of the, um, the race, uh, for Secretary of State in Arizona, for example, the, yeah. but it is that race is an example of uh, the broader point of how uh, those forces, you know, just throw everything to the wall because they know something's going to stick. It may stick in Arizona. It may stick in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It may be a, a Secretary of State here or a U.S. Senate race there. It doesn't matter. It's not like we want oh all federal races. We want to they want to capture what they can capture. Because, because uh, folks, you need to understand everything on the MAGA side. All right, this is not the Republican Party. This is the MAGA Party. Everything for them is about 2024. One. Everything is the setup for 2024. Have our secretaries of state in place? Have our governors in, in place? Have our U.S. Senate candidates, uh, uh, mm -hmm. U.S. senators in place? So when that shit unfolds. After the election night, 
and Trump is claiming that the election was stolen and throws that shit up against the wall, they'll have people in place to make it stick. And you yes. need to understand what your vote this November is all about. It is about making the shit stick in 2024 for the MAGA people. That's all this is about. Dana Loesch said it perfectly. Just substitute out the issue of abortion and put the presidential race in there. It's all about, I want the Senate. Why? Because we need to make the shit stick when it gets yep. to the Senate and they start casting the, um, those electoral college votes. Wh what, what about that Arizona race? We need to make the shit stick. So when that Secretary of State says, I'm sorry, this election is invalid. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's what this is about. And add that up to the and you add it up. There you Wisconsin, go, Georgia, there you go. Pennsylvania, Arizona. Three, three. And what happens? That's you don't it. if that imagine if these people were in office in 2020, we would have President Donald Trump again. And God knows where the where the democracy would be. So, so that's what's at stake. Get your head out your asses. <laughs> Understand what's right in front of you. That smell you smell ain't roses, baby. Yeah, that's and right. You need to understand what this is about. And you have to be registered to vote. You have to be prepared to go stand in damn line. They're going to make this as hard for you as possible. They're going to make it untenable, unbearable. That's all right, baby. You just stand there. Bring your own water. Bring your own potty. I don't give a shit. But be in line. Do that vote thing because it's going to make a difference. I've been saying it for a while. Tara's been saying it for a while. Overwhelm the ballot box with your vote. Yes. Overwhelm the ballot box with your vote because that's the only way you're going to be back on this. And then when you do, we can begin to put in place the corrections that we need to make sure this shit don't happen again and it never sticks. Yes. Exactly. And that's my soapbox for this moment. With that, welcome to the TED Talk. Thank you for coming <laughs> with Michael Steele. Uh, One hundred percent. I've been saying this for years now, and that this is what's at stake. And the power deny them the power, and the way to deny these people the power is by using the power of our vote. That's that right. is how you do it. And exactly don't take and, and don't right. take any shit from anyone about that. You know it doesn't matter, or well, who cares? No, 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 no. <laughs> if you think it doesn't matter, just look at how close the last election was. Same. It might not have been electorally close, but it was close with votes. Less than ten thousand in, or roughly less than eleven thousand in Arizona. Say less than twelve thousand in Georgia. This could have been yeah, a different the, thing. The, the last election was decided uh, honestly by seventy-three thousand votes total. Yes, which is similar to what happened with with right. Hillary Clinton and and Trump. Similar. Not the 77, seven million. 000. The seventy-three thousand in those electoral districts. That's, That's what you're right. talking about. And Out of a hundred and what sixty million cast. Yep. 165 million cast. That's not so a folks, lot, folks. It matters, and it the Lincoln Project. Matter. The Lincoln Project is is a constant reminder. You know, I just want to put on the street. If you want to figure out where you vote, how you vote, what the hours are, when early voting starts, when it ends, um, all of that, go to us.vote or usvotefoundation.org. They're both. They're both links will get you to the same spot. I chair the U.S. Vote Foundation. Yes. We're all about providing you with the information you need to get your vote on. 100%. So you know exactly what the hours are, where the polling places are located. If you're not registered, to get registered. If you're overseas, if you're watching this and you're overseas, you're stationed overseas or living overseas, but still want to vote. We have the U.S. Uh, uh, the uh, Overseas Vote Foundation. Same thing. Go to that site. And we can get you registered and get you voting. That's the goal this November. This is bigger than 2020 because it's all been a setup for 2024. Absolutely. And we also, I think, have a graphic specifically for our folks in Pennsylvania as well, because uh, our union, the uh, the union is one of the Lincoln Project clearing houses. It's, it's curated. It's its own thing, but it's curated under us that helps with volunteers and gets people information Excellent. on voting and all of that. And this week is our focus is Pennsylvania. We've done a town hall on that yesterday. Um, tomorrow, we're doing a Twitter spaces that I'll be hosting at eight o'clock as well, talking about Pennsylvania. So um, there's some information on that as well. There's no excuse not to know. No excuse not to know. That's it. Um, there's something else that uh, that that I think we have to talk about, and that's what's happening with Ukraine, because there's been so much happening there. And um, 
we did a really cool thing. So Lincoln Project has the PAC, and then we also have the the, the Lincoln Democracy Institute, which is our C4, which is cool. Um, but guess who did something for us over there and lent his celebrity to um, our efforts here on on boosting up what's happening in Ukraine? Do you have any idea? No. I'll give oh, you a do hint. Tell. Do tell. May the force be with you. Obi Luke Wan. Skywalker. I was going to Luke say, Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Mark wonderful. Hamill. Mark is, Hamill. Yes, wonderful. he is a huge supporter of Lincoln Project, and he is now an ambassador for the drone program for Ukraine. They've asked him to come in and lend his celebrity to that, and he has also done uh, something for us because what we're seeing happening again within the Republican Party. If you support Ukraine and do not support the dictator, murderous dictator that is Vladimir Putin then you cannot support Republicans because the Republican party has all of a sudden become a Putin party yeah, and are Putin, sympathetic Orban, to them. Yeah, they're, they're, right. they're, they're, Orban yeah. and all the rest of them. Yep. And you had uh, Matt Schlapp, who um, I did a clap back on Matt Schlapp today on Twitter because he tried to call us scammers. Oh, really? CPAC is the one who put out a, a tweet that they ended up having to take down because they got caught. Pro-Putin against Ukraine. CPAC did that, Schlapp. Not us, buddy. Okay, <laughs> Matty boy. Nerve, right? Matty and they boy, the nerve. you got slapped by That's Tara. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they have the nerve to call themselves conservatives now. The Conservative Political Action Conference, right? They're, what's conservative about supporting Vladimir Putin? I'm sorry, wasn't it Ronald Reagan, the conservative, who said tear down this wall to the Soviet Union? And you have Putin, who wants to bring back the glory days of the Soviet Union. And you have Viktor Orban and all the rest of these wannabe authoritarians. Donald Trump, for fuck's sake. And they have the audacity to come after us? <laughs> Look, no. Tara, they, no. These assholes would take the bricks from that wall that Reagan had torn down and stone him with them. Yeah, oh That's God. what they would do today. Yeah, good point. That's exactly what they would do today. Good point. You know? and, and so instead of talking about, you know, talking smack about the Lincoln Project, you know, Matt, maybe you should try some grace, baby. Try some grace. Mm, good Have luck with that. Well, Have in the one. meantime, I want to run this really awesome ad by... Uh, Mark Hamill and in our support for Ukraine. Weeks to go until the most important election in decades. So much is on the line. Our rights, our freedoms. It's a choice between compassion and conspiracy. Between hope for a better America and a rising autocratic movement. In some states, it's harder to vote than it was before which is why it's so important to do just that. We fought too hard and too long protecting the right to vote to let a few politicians take away our voice. Check your registration status. Get your absentee ballot early. Know your precinct. And don't let anyone tell you that your vote won't matter. American democracy is on the line. Your rights are on the line. Because if we don't turn out in this election, it could be our last. Nice. Yes, um, that was my fault uh, because I was talking about the his role with Ukraine and the drones. Uh, but it's a Go TV ad, which is important because it's all related. Right. You have to get out there and vote. You have to deny these people power. Again, if you support Ukraine, you don't want Republicans in power because they're going to pull back and not support the Ukrainians anymore. They don't want to give them military aid. They don't want them to enter NATO. They don't yeah, want the, to have our strategic Putin alliances with Europe strengthened. Sure. They're they're going to give Putin everything he wants. Trump has basically said so. So it's just uh, it it all runs in together. And Lord knows what other documents we there were down in Mar-a-Lago that are sitting in in a Kremlin, uh, <laughs> you know, desk somewhere. One of the what are the dolls called that you take out? Oh yeah. <laughs> There's documents in each one of those somewhere. Each one of those is a document. It's <laughs> scrolled up. Good Lord. You know. Well, on, on that note, as, as we come to a close, Thursday is the January 6th uh, committee hearing, maybe the final one is what, what people are saying now. We're going to have live coverage like we usually do, and we'll be on right after the hearing concludes to give our uh, thoughts on what happened. Rick will be back, so make sure you tune in for us on Thursday. Um, any any predictions, uh, Michael, about what we're going to hear out of the January sixth hearing? I think I think we're going to get a little bit more filler uh, around um, some of the narratives that popped over the summer. Um, 
including the Jenny Thomas narrative, um, and certainly um, a little bit of where and what uh, happened to some of the, uh, the documents, because I, I would think that there would be some documents that re relate back to January 6th. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think this committee is going to is going to continue to hold the country a bit spellbound. And why do I say that? Because it's now number two on the list of, of voters out there of things that they're concerned about. Which it's I'm happy the about the economy and the democracy. Um, and that was not the case five months ago, six Correct. months ago. It is today. Uh, and I think January 6th um, has done, the committee and the members have done a good job. So um, look for more of the story to be told. Um, and it's going to continue to feed uh, how voters feel about uh, Republicanism, uh, or more importantly, MAGAism, uh, and the relative role that it's all played to to the horror that we saw on January 6th. I hope so. I hope so. It's uh, There's so much at stake. Midterms have never been more important yeah. than now, really, honestly, truly. And um, I what, know that what this, was that Washington quote again before we go? What was that Washington quote the again? The power of the Constitution rests with the people. Okay, now, so if y'all just want to take that and use that as toilet paper, <laughs> that's your choice. Right. But if you don't, then you may want to consider very hard who empowers you or who you empower with your vote. Absolutely. And big thank you to Mark Hamill. And in the illustrious words of Luke Skywalker, may the vote be with you. There you go. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Michael Steele. Absolutely you. love you. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll be back on Thursday, like I said, after the January 6th hearings. They start at 1. And don't forget, yeah. we're speaking tomorrow night at 7. And the Twitter spaces I'll be hosting on Pennsylvania tomorrow night on Twitter at 8. I kept it clean, Rick. <laughs> A little bit.